Hi, you may recognize me from other FPNA courses. My name is Duncan, and we are just delighted and excited to be sharing this FPNA course with you. If you've taken some of our other FPNA courses on financial model building, then you will certainly appreciate how much work and time goes into building a great financial model. The thing about the design and build process for financial models is that once the model's built, it actually isn't totally complete. We need to remember how important our audience is and how important it is for the model to communicate properly through to those key stakeholders. So in this course, we're going to focus on bringing you some tips and some guidance on the best way to be presenting and setting up your financial models so they print really, really well. We've also built a model with a vertical structure. So we have a large vertical stack in place over here on the model tab. We need to understand how best to navigate that vertical stack. In this particular model, it's pretty tall, but in models you build, it may get even larger, even up to one, 2,000 rows or even more. So we're gonna be going through some great features that are available in Excel. Some of them are not known very well by very many people, and these features are gonna help us quickly navigate through this vertical stack to get to the sections and schedules that we need really quickly. And printing in Excel is something that should be straightforward, but it's not, and a lot of people struggle with it. And I'm sure if you're listening to this video, you may be one of those people that struggled with it too. So in this course, we're gonna go through the right way to print so you can have full control over your print settings for your final presentation. And finally, we've invested so much time building this model template, making sure that it's correctly put together. Now we wanna protect the the integrity of the file. So applying protection to a file is also something which should be straightforward, but it's difficult to understand in Excel. We're gonna walk you through it in a very clear way so you understand all the different levels that you can apply protection to in a file like this one. So there's a lot of exciting topics that we're gonna be covering, and a lot of the tips and tricks that we're gonna show you are tips that are not very well known in Excel and are really gonna help you build up your skill set. We're super excited to get started. We'll see you soon in the next lesson. So this course called FPNA Professionals Model Protection and Presentation is actually the third course in a series of three FPNA courses. And each one of these three FPNA courses uses the same model that we're looking at right now. And if you haven't checked out the first two courses in this series of three, definitely make sure you go back and check out those courses. Now let's jump ahead to the next video for a quick tour of the model. Now if you've been involved with some of our previous FPNA courses, you may be very familiar with this model, so we may be able to keep this model tour relatively brief. Now as we look through the model this time, we really want to be thinking about printing, presentation, and also protection. The cover page is critically important. It should be the first thing that gets presented as it's our first opportunity to make a good impression on the audience. Now, as we move over to the model tab, we can easily see that it is obviously a large vertical stack. And we can see that vertical stack here when we zoom out to a low zoom level. As we mentioned in the other video, you may be constructing FPNA models that are even taller than this. So having some skills to be able to navigate through a vertical stack is critical. Now, if we quickly zoom back in to where we were before, what we can see here is we wanna focus on the areas of the model that we would want to protect. Obviously, for as an example, we would want to protect all of the formulas that we put across here to make these headings work, but we may want to leave this unprotected so the user of the model can change the month from one to the next. So we'll definitely need to put some thought into the areas of the model that we want to protect and the areas of the model that we want to leave open for people to work on. The other thing that we want to think about is the print settings. For example, the area that we're showing right now would be an area that we would want to print, but there are other, other areas of the model that we may not want to include in the printout. For instance, if we were to roll down a little bit like this, just to this section right here for the volume graphing data, this would be an example of an area which we may not want to include in the printout. These figures here are critically necessary to get all the graphs and charts to work, but they're not really meant to be printed, so we would want to exclude these from the print settings. So the idea with this course is for us to look through this model again, but through a different lens. 
Now we want to look through the lens of printing and presentation, and we also want to be thinking about the areas of the model that we need to protect and what are the areas that we need to leave open for users to be able to update the model with actuals. Once you've invested so much time in a great model like this, it's critically important to protect the integrity of it. You need to be certain that all of the formulas that you've diligently checked are going to be protected so they're not overwritten by hard codes or changed. One of the things that's going to be so fun about this course is that in all of the topics that we've just mentioned, there are so many interesting Excel features that are not very well known. We're really excited to present and bring those features to you to help you build up your skill set. Continue learning. Join CFI today.